Hello, everyone, to our Saturday, March 8th Classroom 2.0 live show. Today, our topic is Donors Choose Tips for Success. And I'd like to welcome everyone in. We've got a lot of people new to Blackboard Collaborate and new to Classroom 2.0 Live as well. Uh, the show hosts are Peggy George, me, Lori Moffitt, and Tammy Moore. Special thanks to Tammy Moore for doing closed captioning. If you have uh, a hearing impairment and would like to use closed captioning, it's you're not going to be able to hear me. But it's the icon is in the audio video panel where it says CC. If English is not your first language, uh, you can also follow along with closed caption, caption, captioning. Sorry, our special guests today for donors choose tips for success are Laura Candler and Francie Kuhlman. The live binder today is located at this website, and Peggy's going to be posting that link into the chat. The links in chat are live. You can actually take them from the chat, whether in the live show or in the recording. Uh, the various websites in the live binder are on the left edge rather than on the top. All of the recordings are posted on the Archives and Resources page at live.classroom2.0.com slash archive dash and dash resources dot html. And that is also posted in the chat. We always like to find out where in the world people are logging in from. So if you take that second whiteboard tool and click with your mouse on the world map, we can get a sense of where everybody's coming in from. I'm from central Pennsylvania. Peggy's logging in from Phoenix, Arizona. Tammy's in southwest Arkansas. You can also type in your location in the chat if you'd like. I'm not sure where. Uh, I know Paula's logging in from New Orleans, Louisiana. I don't know where Francie and Laura are logging in from. We're getting all sorts of places all over the United States. And you can see the United States is pretty crowded as far as dots. We do have someone logging in from Argentina. OK, all over, mostly the US. Now to the first poll question. And again, you vote with the little check in a box near your name at the top of the participants window. First one, have you spent more than $100 of your own money on resources for your classroom this year? And you can type in the chat what it is that you purchased. So go ahead and vote on that. And once we've got most of the room responding, I will publish the Tammy, your hands up. No, you're fine. Sorry, I bumped it by accident. OK, OK. I will post this to the whiteboard. And seven, a little over 70% of those who have voted, 71% have spent more than $100. Only 3% have not of those that voted. We still had a few that didn't vote. Second question, again, yes or no. Let me clear these first. Have you ever created a Donors Choose project? And again, you vote with the little check mark in the box 
near your name at the very top of the participants window. And again, I will post these to the whiteboard. And most in the room have. We have 54% who said yes, they have created a Donors Choose project. If you have the check on the iPad, yes, you ought to be you ought to be able to vote with that. Yeah, I think you can vote in the on the iPad. Third polling question, have you ever donated to a Donors Choose grant project? So it's either yes or no, have you donated? And the results are slowing down. I'll publish those to the whiteboard. And over half have donated. 56% have donated to a Donors Choose grant project, 25% have not. Again, I'd like to welcome you all to our topic today, Donors Choose Tips for, tips for Success. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to Paula Noggle, who will introduce our special guests today. Thank you, Lori. It's so nice to be here this morning. We are in for such a special treat. I am so excited and honored to be doing the introductions this morning. I've been a huge fan of Laura Candler's for many, many years and have enjoyed the many resources that she shares on her site teaching resources. Laura was a fifth grade teacher for, for 30 years in North Carolina and during that time she authored many print and ebooks, presented workshops around the country, and was a recipient of the Milliken Family Foundation Education Award. Since her reach oh, and Laura used Donors Choose to obtain oodles of materials for her classroom. Since her retirement, she has been continuing to give back to the educational community by teaching others about Donors Choose and helping to fund classroom projects. Francie Kilgelman is my Donors Choose hero. She has earned successfully written proposals and has earned over $66,000 for her students and her classroom. And not only does she do that, but she is also a review teacher for Donors Choose, which means that she helps other teachers get their proposals letter perfect and post it on the site. She also loves to sprinkle love throughout the Donors Choose community by using the gift cards she receives as a Donors Choose reviewer to help others get their projects funded. Francie is currently in her 13th year as a fifth grade teacher in Los Angeles. Together, Francie and Laura created a Donors Choose Giving Community to help teachers get their classroom projects funded. And they are going to tell us so much more about that in this webinar today. So everybody buckle up and get ready for a great ride and let's get our uh, questions ready and let's learn lots about how to be a successful Donors Choose participant. Okay, over to Laura. Hi, I'm really excited to be here and um, so excited to be able to share some things and uh, work with Francie. We have a newbie question here. How do donors choose get started and how can it help public school teachers in the United States? Um, I was aware of how it got started, but of course I want to do a little research when I knew I was going to be speaking on this and I'll keep it brief, but I found some interesting things. Um, first of all, it was started back in 2000 by Charles Best, who was a history teacher at a Bronx High School. And he was spending his own money, as many of us do, on uh, resources for the classroom and noticed that many of his colleagues were doing the same. And he came up with the idea of a website where teachers could uh, post their projects and then donors could come and fund them. And so he um, put it together, he kind of put something together and he convinced 
10 of his colleagues to post projects. Now, the only problem was um, Charles Best didn't really know any donors, so he secretly funded all of those projects himself. And um, his colleagues were excited because, hey, it worked, and rumors spread, and that's how it all began. And I just love that story. I think it's brilliant. Um, I, 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 I have a question I wish I could ask him, and that is, when did you tell these colleagues what you did? Because it's on the website now, so, um, so I, they know, but I thought that was interesting. But anyways, it, uh, in 2003, um, Oprah became their champion, and you know the rest is history. So uh, you can go to the Donors Choose website and look on the About page and look at the story timeline, and it's a, it's a really neat story to kind of see where they're going and where they want to go. So that's the first part of the question. And the second part of the question is really um, what we're going to be addressing today. But it can help public school teachers get resources for their classrooms and even provide things like field trip opportunities. So we'll be getting into the details of that um, in just a minute. Um, OK. Um, so our presentation, Donors Choose Tips for Success, um, is all about how to obtain funding for your classroom projects. And what's going to happen is I'm going to start here with a little bit and then turn it over to Francie because she's really the expert on um, using Donors Choose. And then at the end, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Caring Classrooms Giving Community that um, Francie and I um, are administrators of and that we created a um, few months ago. So here's our quick agenda. Um, we're going to start with an intro to Donors Choose and really go you know, step by step, but pretty quickly about how you submit a proposal. Go into some tips for getting your project funded and where to find helpful resources. We're going to talk to you about Donors Choose Giving Communities and do drawings for six $50 gift cards. So pretty exciting stuff. Um, so I already gave you a little background on Donors Choose. What is DonorsChoose.org? website where it's actually an organization, but they have a website where teachers can post projects, ideas, make requests for resources for their classroom, and total strangers and different people can go donate. Um, I love Donors Choose so much that I started building, uh, well, I started with one page on my website, but now it's a series of about five different pages of resources for using Donors Choose in the classroom and tips for getting funded and so on. Uh, Francie and I connected a couple of years ago online, and uh, when I found out that she was a reader for Donors Choose and um, had had all these projects funded successfully, I invited her to do a webinar with me, which we did a couple of summers ago, um, but a lot of new information has come out, so um, I was really excited when we were invited to be guests here and share some updates. So um, some of the things that we're going to be covering are in the original webinar, but we really tried to go quickly through that because you can uh, go back to that webinar on this website, and we're focusing a little bit more today on some of the tips and tricks and things about um, caring classrooms. So who can submit a Donors Choose proposal? And that would be, um, you've got to work full time in a US public school. Um, so teachers, librarians, guidance counselors, school nurses, full time teachers who work as coaches can submit. And um, if you teach in a private school, I'm sure you're disappointed to hear this. Um, there are some other um, places like Adopt a Classroom and Digital Wish that are open to private schools. Um, and I really don't have an answer about why Donors Choose does not uh, include private schools. I'm sure there's a very good one. Um, so at the end of the uh, webinar, we will be giving away those gift cards. And if you win one and you're not a public school teacher, you can um, donate to a project and on Donors Choose and just um, use it to make a nice do donation to make a teacher happy. So. Uh, um, does Donors Choose work? Yes, it works. Um, 200, over $230 million have been raised in the last 14 years, 11 million students impacted, um, almost a half a million projects funded. And I'm going to be turning this over to Francie because she's had 118 projects funded. And since the total given was 66,000, I'm thinking maybe that's an, uh, an update. So Francie, is, have you added another 1,000 to your total now? Well, I recently helped our, 
our school get resources we need for our edible garden. So I don't just do proposals for my class anymore. Now I've branched out and I help grade levels get what they need and the school. So yep, we, we, we keep funding more and more. Okay. I will <laughs> turn off my microphone and let you take it away. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Laura. I am excited to be here and I do love Donors Choose. I wrote my first Donors Choose proposal in 2006 and I believe that's when Donors Choose went nationwide. At first it was just for some East Coast classrooms and uh, at first I only had a few proposals a year, but last year I successful, successfully funded 35 different projects. And so um, you sort of get into a rhythm of once a project is posted and then it gets funded, then you finish up all the paperwork and write another one. So that's what I do now. I also read about 25 to 50 proposals every week and we clean them up before they're posted. We remove typos and make them a little clearer. So I get to see tons and tons of proposals and every so often I say, that is a fantastic idea and I copy it and say, maybe someday I'll put that in for my own class. And most of all, I love being part of the Donors Choose community because it's a wonderful group of teachers who make a little extra effort to get funding in for projects in their classroom. At my school, there's only like two or three of us out of 20 teachers who go ahead and use Donors Choose. So I'm always trying to convince people that it's really easy to do and go for it. What kind of um, resources could you ask for? Well, every year I get a subscription to Brain Pop and they also offer Brain Pop Junior. Once a year at Halloween we need owl pellets. Uh, you can ask for books, subscriptions to Scholastic News. And what's wonderful about Donors Choose is that you uh, don't have to do very much work to get the proposal posted. You don't have to tell your principal about it don't have to get them to authorize it. There's no forms to complete and you just write four short paragraphs where you describe your school, your students, the resources you want and it, it's basically a nice short persuasive essay. So you're thinking, well yeah, I'll get my project posted but who's going to fund it? You would be surprised at how many people want to help you fund your project. At first I only noticed that people who visited the Donors Choose website would fund my project saying, oh, that's a great idea or, oh, I love going on this field trip. I'm going to help fund your field trip project. But now, um, occasionally I'll write parents and say, hey, I've got this great project. Would you like to donate one dollar towards it? You know, I never ask for very much. Friends, family, you could post on Facebook, tell people what you want. And now I'm, I'm heavily involved in the Donors Choose Giving Page community, which Laura will be telling you more about. And it's, um, you can also fund your own project, which I am guilty of helping my projects get funded occasionally. So here's an overview of what we're going to go over. You'll um, set up a free account and you'll write a little bit about your school and, and yourself and uh, add a classroom photo and you will um, write the proposal which is the four, four paragraph proposal Hopefully your project will get funded and you have four months to, to, to get it funded and then the best part is it's like Christmas in, in March when your packages arrive and you get to uh, open all your, your, your wonderful resources with your kids. You take pictures of the kids when the resources come and um, there's a couple of wrap up things you'll do. But it's not very hard and it's awfully wonderful to get uh, resources. So regarding the first photo that you have to submit, it can't be, uh, the kids can't be larger than that little green oval you're looking at. Teachers can be larger but not kids, but most pictures that look great um, have kids in them and if you, uh, you have to have a permission slip that Donors Choose provides if you want to include the kids pictures, but if you don't want to wait for that permission slip, just have a wonderful bulletin board project. You can have a picture of the exterior of your school. But 
when you think about a picture, this is where you'll see it uh, when your project is posted. So you want to have a, a really dynamic photo that people will go, oh, I want to I read this proposal. I want to fund this project. You cannot use clip art, but uh, you can be very creative. You can show art projects. Now, if you're thinking you, can, you want to get a laptop so you can do lesson plans at home, that's not the kind of resource you can ask for. You have to make sure that the resource is something the students will use. So now we're going to get you to chat on, uh, in the chat box. And imagine you can ask for any resources for your classroom totaling under $3,000. Why don't you type in the chat box what you would ask for? Maybe you want that smart board or a class set of iPads. Go crazy. Ask for anything you'd want. Oh, I see some people are going for a really expensive field trip. I know what you mean. These are wonderful resources that are out of our reach and definitely out of our pocketbook. OK, now you have to stop now because this is a reality check. The reason I have so many funded proposals is that I don't ask for huge proposals like this. I just ask for a project that's around $350 or less. If I need three iPads, then I will write three separate projects because 70% of all projects that are small do get funded. And there's nothing more depressing than working hard to fund a project and nothing happens. It closes and you don't get the resource you want. So now that you've had your reality check, let's type in some resources you might ask for if your total would be under $350. For example, I always ask for toner. I love toner. I, I need pencils, dry erase markers, um, just goes on and on. But there's a lot of things you can ask for that are in that $350 or less category. Laura and I put together a list of resources you might ask for. And that's part of the live binder. And if you look here, um, flash drives are always being used in my classroom. And if you don't yet have a document camera and a projector, those are wonderful resources to ask for. Just make sure you ask for them one at a time. And uh, there's nothing more exciting than getting your project funded rather than waiting and worrying that it's going to close without getting funded. When you write your proposal, you make sure you have a snappy title because you want people to notice them. I, uh, one of the resources I never knew how wonderful it would be is a classroom copier. So I, I wrote, classroom copier keeps us working, uh, costumes, backdrops, action. I do field trip proposals now. And the last one of them was, we want to visit our local river and test the water. So really work on having a cute little title. You describe your classroom. And if you're a Title I school, tell them about it. Say 85% of the students at our school receive free lunches or reduced price lunches. People want to give to your project if you're uh, what, what donors choose call a high poverty school. And then describe each resource you want. When we're reading the donors choose proposals and the teachers just say, I really want these resources because they're great, then we have to kick them back and you lose time to get it posted because you have to write in the description of your four paragraph essay exactly what you want. And then, you know, your typical persuasive essay, please help our classroom get the resources we need. You will be changing the lives of my children. These are some of the stores you can shop at. Re last year, Amazon was added. Woohoo! hoo And uh, however, we recommend you go through AKJ Books instead of Amazon for your books. If you uh, want iPads, you'll shop at Best Buy. Lakeshore's there. NASCO is great for science projects. And Blick has a wonderful uh, assortment of materials. 
So here's an example. I like to shop at Quill because that's my office supply store through Donors Choose. And I wait until fall because in the fall, Quill always offers a corporate 50% funding of your project. So when your project, let's say, is $500, it'll suddenly be $250. So that's exciting. So that's when I get my toner, my flash drives, pencils, anything you want. I do have to warn you that it, Donors Choose is a um, nonprofit organization, and they have a very low organization cost. So they add an administrative fee and shipping cost to your project. So for this example, your project was just 275 in resources, but by the time the processing fee and the shipping was added, your your total project is now $400. So don't go shopping too much. I know it's fun to shop and hit the button, but make sure that your resources are low enough that your total uh, costs will only be around $400. And that's why we say stop with the, with the resource cost at $350. Once your project is posted, it'll look just like this. And this is what my class photo looks like. These kids are now about eighth graders, but I just love that photo. And I love the color. So everybody, it's become my logo. If you see that pink girl in the shirt, she is jumping for joy because we were playing Classroom Jeopardy. And I use this photo for all of my projects. Uh, when you get your project posted, you only have four months to uh, get it fully funded. So the very first week that it's posted is the week that you want to get a little bit aggressive because if you tell the people that will help you post your projects that if they type right here, if you can look where it says promo or gift code, they type in the word inspire, their donation will be doubled. So that means if they donate $5, suddenly you get $10 towards your project. So when I write to parents, as I said, I just say, oh, if you could just donate a dollar, um, that will really help our project. But of course, the parents are much kinder than that, and they donate a lot more generally. And it, if you can get a lot of donations, it looks like your project is very popular. Even if people are just donating a dollar, you'll have 20 donors who love your project. So then a, a, a donor who just happens to come upon Donors Choose and sees your project, they go, well, 20 people like this project. Maybe I will help that project get funded too. So if you have a project with just like no donors or one donor, you're really not going to get it funded as fast. There really is a, people want to help people that have successful projects. This this is where I go to learn about corporate sponsorship funding. So I, you just uh, click on the, your state, and you will see that there's 50% matches going on all, all the time. For example, um, Jamba Juice was offering a match for PE projects. And so I got some jumping bands that, that look like fun, and I got some balls. So what I do now is I create a project based on what the corporate sponsorship is. And you will find this by going on, when you're on Donors Choose, it's at the very bottom of the page, and it'll say corporate sponsor. Because you might as well have people help you fund your project. There's another type of funding called Almost Home. And this is the most miraculous funding of all. Whatever your project costs, everything will be funded except $98. However, a lot of us know about Almost Home projects, and so as soon as we hear that one's in the works, we start writing a proposal. So this is my class, and we got the MakerBot 3D printer this year, which is so wonderful. And um, look how much it cost, over $2,600, and I only had to get friends and family to help me with $98 of it. In fact, the Curing Classroom communities helped fund it while I uh, didn't have the internet one day. It was so exciting. So once your project is funded, you just have to do a few things. And you must do these because then you are a good Donors Choose participant and you'll be able to have more projects. So you upload six photos of your students. Make sure they're horizontal photos and not vertical. 
and you write a, a thank you letter. Oh, thank you for all the wonderful people who helped. It's just an it's a online letter, and um, once the resources come in, you photograph the kids using the resources, and you you write a, a letter explaining what it's like now that you have this resource. You want to do this timely because you accrue points every time you. Uh, follow the directions and do what donors choose wants. When you're new to donors choose, you start with three points. And a project only costs about one point if it's a not expensive project under 400. Every time you follow the directions and you say, thank you, I, I really want these resources, it's called resources confirmation, and you send your, your thank you notes timely, you accrue three points. So if you, what I suggest you do is, if you're new to Donors Choose, write three very small proposals. Something like uh, the minimum you have to ask for resources is $100. So let's say you have three $150 proposals. You get them funded right away because they're so small that people, once you're in the, we call it the double digits, 90 and under, people love to help your project because it's so easy to get it funded. You, you follow the directions, you get nine points, and then you can start asking for special things that cost more. Like a field trip costs three to four points, depending on how expensive it is. And my kids say, Mrs. K, you have so many field trips. Well, it's because I fund buses through Donors Choose, and I have a lot of points. I have like over 80 points because of all the projects I've done. So you have to follow the directions and move through the Donors Choose system in order for you to accrue your points. Uh, this is a help page, and you can get all your frequently asked questions answered there. And then on the far right, under search help, you can just click the contact box and tell them if, if whatever you need, you have a question, you're wondering why you didn't get the sponsorship map, match, you can just uh, write donors choose directly. It might take them up to three to five days to respond to you, but they will get back to you. Laura's going to tell you more about this uh, new uh, wonderful system that I've learned about called the Donors Choose Communities. And um, it has changed my life because I feel that I'm not uh, alone in my classroom anymore. There's a bunch of people just like me who want resources for our classroom, who want to help our kids, and we're excited to find ways to fund our projects. And so uh, the Donors Choose community is places where we can chat with each other, we can help each other get our projects funded, and I'm going to okay. uh, Thanks, give Francie. the mic over to Laura so she can you tell you You did great. More. We said you would be trying to wrap it up by 1235 because I wanted to have time to talk about the communities. That was super. Um, I want to remind everybody um, about the webinar that Francie and I did a couple of years ago. It's a really good resource. Um, what she went through this time in about 20 minutes, she, she went into quite a bit more detail about the basics um, a few years ago because a lot of the basics haven't changed. In the original webinar, she spent quite a bit of time telling step by step how you write each part of the proposal. And um, that was a really awesome uh, part of the webinar, but we decided in the interest of time because we wanted time to share about caring classrooms that we would just refer people to that other webinar, and that's located on the webinar page that Peggy just put in the chat. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about communities, and first of all, I will tell you, um, Francie started talking to me about communities, um, I don't know, uh, probably last summer. And I looked at them, and I was really confused, just really confused. In fact, I had looked at them probably more than a year ago, and I thought, this looks interesting, but I have no idea what this is. And when she started talking to me one day, I said, you know, can we just like have a phone conversation and let me just ask you everything because I'm very confused about this. So she started talking to me, and then I asked her to write a blog um, article for Corkboard Con Connections, my blog. 
And then um, I got kind of got, got so excited about it um, that I decided to start one on my own called Caring Cat Classrooms. But it wasn't really on my own because I asked Francie to be an administrator uh, with me of this community. And we're, I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. But um, I hope that this part of the webinar will sort of clarify some things for you. But Francie introduced communities by saying it is a way for people to kind of come together and support each other. And let me show you a little more clearly, um, not that her explanation wasn't clear, but let me just sort of break it down into sort of the parts of what a community is all about. So a community um, really has two parts. Um, a community on Donors Choose is a giving page where administrators, it could be one person, it could be several people, set up a page and they handpick projects that go on their page. And then they try to bring attention to those projects and try to promote them and try to help um, get those projects funded. But communities also have an important part, and that is the people behind the projects, the donors. And what happened was, I guess, after the community started, these giving communities started, people started creating Facebook pages where the members of the community could share ideas and help promote the projects and so on. So these communities are made up of some teachers who uh, want to get their projects funded, but also donors who might not even be teachers. So we, our um, community that we run together is called Clar Caring Classrooms, and I'll be telling you a little bit more about it in just a moment here. Before we get to Caring Classrooms, I wanted to give you a sort of screen capture of some of the top donors choose communities. If you notice, the first one is called Rebuild Joplin Schools. So what happened was people got together to help the teachers, the schools that were hit by the tornado in 2011. And projects from the teachers in that particular area from the school systems that were hit by the tornado were posted on this giving page. And then lots of donors, over 5,000 of them, came to donate. And that particular community raised over five, um, excuse me, about a half a million dollars. Um, and then rebuild more schools, similar thing, and then Hurricane Sandy relief. So a lot of these communities, the big ones, were started in response to um, you know, disasters and things where um, whole groups of people were working together. Now, there's another type of community, and ours um, we're kind of excited to see. It's at the top of the list of some of those other communities. It's called Caring Classrooms. And our community is made mostly of teachers who are helping to support each other. And we are a very active group. We have over a 1,000 people who have donated to our projects. And we've raised, um, actually, that number is even higher. I think it's over 44,000. Um, today or almost to it. Then there are other communities made of teachers, mostly teachers. Music makes our students smarter, Kindergarten Rock, Southern Hospitality, The Roundup. All of these um, are active giving communities. And um, you can become a part of any or all of them. And if you go to the communities page on Donors Choose, um, there's just, I don't know, dozens, hundreds. <laughs> I never tried to count them, but there's a lot of them. Um, to find the communities page, you can scroll to the bottom of the home page on Donors Choose. And there's a little link down there that says communities. OK, so let me tell you a little bit about how Caring Classrooms work, works. And I want to say this is just about how Caring Classrooms works. It, they don't all work this way. So to find, if you join another community like um, the Roundup or Music Makes Our Students Smarter, you kind of have to hang out on their Facebook page and find out um, what the procedures are. But just wanted to share with you how our um, system works. So we do have a Facebook page here with over 4,000 people who like our page. Now, um, let me go into a little more detail. Let me tell you a little bit about benefits of joining a community. Then I'll come back and tell you a little more about um, caring classrooms. One reason you might want to join a community is that you hope that your project would be added to the page. But um, remember that most of the communities have um, a limited number of projects on the page because they're trying to bring attention to them. So if you're in a large community, your chances are fairly small of having your project on the page. But if you're a um, contributing member and a part of the group, eventually you'll probably get one on that page. Um, another big reason is to receive tips about funding opportunities and other donors choose news. I noticed in the chat area 
um, French, a lot, while Francie was talking, and she was talking about Almost Home and all these different opportunities, and people were putting questions in there, like, where do you find out about this? Well, Francie is one of the administrators on our in our community, and when she finds out about these opportunities, she posts them in caring classrooms. So that's an, um, a, a great reason to belong. Um, it's also wonderful to support other classrooms through small tax deductible donations. You literally only have to donate one dollar to be a donor and to be a member of the community. And then if you use the Inspire code, it doubles to $2 um, for the first week of a project. So it makes you feel really good to be able to help other teachers. And you're also in the community to connect with other donors, chief stands, and educators across the country. So how do you actually join a community? Um, there's sort of two parts to it. To actually be listed on the community page as a supporter, you have to donate. So liking their Facebook page does not list you as a true supporter of the page. You have to donate a dollar to any project on the giving page. And here's a screen capture of our giving page. And then you can also find the Facebook page for the community and like it. And you can participate in conversations there. But to become an actual true supporter, um, you do need to make a donation. So how can you get your project on a giving page? Uh, become involved with that community by donating to other projects. And I'm not talking about $20 donations. It's just a dollar here, a dollar there um, does help um, other projects. And as Francie was saying, um, it's a really good strategy if you can get a lot of people to donate small amounts to your project. project looks really popular. And she didn't mention this, but um, if if you have, like, say you have 50 donors on your project, it, your project might get featured on the Donors Choose homepage um, list of projects, and then it's usually funded very quickly. Um, if you comment and support other members of the Facebook group and kind of get your name out there, um, that helps. Look for information about how to submit your project for the page. And on our Caring Classrooms page, up in the upper right corner, there's a little link that looks just like the kids there. It says, how to submit your project. And when you click that, it has the specific directions. Um, but remember, spots are usually limited on most of the pages, so you, you, know, you have to be patient with it. Um, just a little background on our community. We started on August 8th. Um, and I, that's, I just totally caught this the wrong date. Obviously, it was 2013, not 2014. And I also can't do math because that was seven months ago and not six months ago. But anyways, we're excited about the amount. And it's not that Francie and I have raised this money. The community has raised this money. We have over 1,000 donating supporters and over 4,000 Facebook followers. We keep a spreadsheet of all of the projects that are on our giving page. And right now, we have a total of 250 projects that are either completely funded through our help or in the process of being funded. And we've impacted thousands of students um, all over the United States. So how does our page work in particular? Well, we kind of have this little um, magic formula that Francie and I have tinkered with. I'll say a lot of it came from Francie, and we've just kind of played with it over the last few months. That Francie suggested that we just limit our projects to 10 on the page because if you, if we're trying to feature 25 projects, it's going to be hard to get them funded. We also decided to limit our projects that we will put on our page to ones that need less than 500 remaining. And we don't count matching grants because um, these matches, like almost home, they can just disappear. But if you only need um, 500 or less to fund your project, it would be eligible to be selected. Um, we Most of our projects are funded through microfunding, which is like a dollar here, a dollar there. And I'll explain a little bit more about that when I talk about this next part about Sunday Sunday. Um, every Sunday, I do a call for project proposals. We call it Sunday Sunday. And at 8 AM Eastern Standard Time, I put something out that says, Happy Sunday Sunday. You know, Submit your links, and I give a little explanation. But in order to participate, um, 
you actually have to donate a dollar that day or more. You know, a lot of people do donate more, but at least a dollar on that Sunday before you submit your project to us. So that way, it's, it's, <clears throat> I say it's kind of like a lottery. It's sort of like um, a wonderful education lottery because we have over, usually we have close to 100 submissions. And we only usually have maybe three or four project, I mean, openings on the page. So your chances are kind of small, but hey, you know, you're donating a dollar to help another teacher and the possibility of it being funded or added to our page um, is, is there always. Um, we do select projects from active members of the community. As I said, we keep a spreadsheet <clears throat> and we go back to it before we make our selections each week. So we keep trying to, you know, spread the love and we don't, even though we have some really active members and we would love to be able to, you know, every week add a project from them because they are so generous and so active, we just, we don't do that. We try to add um, projects from new people. and. Um, we also have special contests where we try to obtain outside sponsors, just like um, I asked some of my blogger friends who donated so generously the gift cards for this particular event. The last event we had was a Share the Love on Donors Choose contest on Valentine's Day, and we actually had 12 $50 gift cards donated. So that's um, helping because we don't want the giving page to be where just teachers are donating to other teachers. You know, teachers use donors choose to help get their projects funded. They don't want to have to spend $500 trying to get their project on the page. We don't want that. That's why we say just donate a, a dollar just to um, kind of enter the, the uh, the sort of lottery that we are picking the projects. But by having these um, outside sponsors, we're adding you know, more funds into the community. We, if you click on that link I was telling you about, you can download this um, one page summary of how to um, submit your project request. And that is linked in the live binder. Um, I think I've already talked about everything. And then there's like a little QR code on the page there that if you were to print it out and hand this out at school to different people, they could scan that. And it would take them to our Donors Choose page where they could learn more about caring classrooms. Um, I just wanted to bring this back up again. This link, um, there's a lot of resources on my website. And they all start here dealing with Donors Choose. So um, you can find a lot of information here. And I started a Pinterest board a couple of weeks ago for Donors Choose Resources. And if you follow that, then you'll see when I pin new things, it's not just things for my website either. It's things like um, contests or Francie uh, has written a couple of blog posts. Um, if you want to know about Sunday Sunday, there's a pin there that will take you to that. I have pins going straight to different places on Donors Choose. Um, there's a pin there that shows a picture of a letter, and Stephanie Mormon in Teaching in Room 6 wrote a um, blog post about how to have your kids write good thank you letters. So I pinned that. So you can let me know, too, if you find some pins that you think needed to be added to the board or you know of blog posts that are helpful. Um, just let us know in the Caring Classrooms community. Just post it on the wall, and then I can add it to our board. Um, I, I also wanted to mention I've seen a lot of questions coming up in the chat, and I know that there's probably not any way we're going to be able to answer all of these at the end of the session. Um, but if you join our community, you can post your question on the wall. Uh, we prefer that you not just email us privately because you probably have the same question that a lot of people have, and we can answer it on the wall, and then other people will be able to see the response there. But just letting you know that's another resource for you. So um, we are ready for the gift card giveaway. Uh, and let, let me just kind of tell you what's going to happen. We're going to give one away now. And one of the moderators, um, I can't remember who was going to be doing the honors on handling the giveaway. They'll tell you in just a moment how that's going to be done. And then we're going to be giving five more away on my webinars page. Now, if you, I don't know if the link's been posted or not, but if you found it, this little thing called raffle copter, which is used for giveaways because it's a randomizer, it's not open yet. It is not going to open until 1 p.m. unless I didn't set it up right. But I set it up right 
to uh, set it up to open after the webinar. The if you win a card, um, it will need to be used to fund a donor's choose project. I think there's a couple of months. I don't know, maybe four or six months that you can hold on to it. If you are not a public school teacher in the United States, you could go to the Caring Classroom page and just donate what you win directly to those projects and, and that would just be a wonderful thing to do. So even if you don't have a, a use for it yourself, um, you can do that. If you do have a project or you're planning to write one, you know, if you win it, save it and put it on your own project. There's nothing at all wrong with that. And I just wanted to give a shout out to the bloggers who each donated um, the $50 gift card. Stephanie Mormon of Teaching in Word 6, Stephanie Van Horn of Third Grade Thoughts, Angela Watson of The Cornerstone for Teachers, Jennifer Rundy of Rundy's Room, um, Blair Turner of Change the World One Lesson at a Time, and Tabitha Caro um, of Flapjack Educational Resources. These are um, wonderful ladies, very generous, and um, I was just so thrilled when I, I put out a call for who would like to fund a $50 or donate a $50 gift card for the webinar and in less than 24 hours, six these six ladies said, I will, I will. So I, I just think it's wonderful. So I hope you'll have a chance to visit their blogs and um, Peggy, I don't think I gave you links to their uh, to their blogs, we definitely want to add those to our live binder so that because they have great resources too. Um, okay, so who is going to be um, helping us with the gift card giveaway for right now? I'm Alana, and the way great. it's going to work is this: if you are interested in this uh, raffle for the the uh, gift card, yes, get ready, Peggy. Type that in the chat. I'm trying to as well. Uh, what I'd like you to do, please, to, is to use that little hand icon. You'll raise your hand, and please keep your hand up until you are acknowledged once you're the winner. So raise your hand if you're interested. And when the bells stop ringing, the hand raise, not the, not the check mark next to the hand. It looks like a hand. And I see we have... Many, many, many people. Okay. Once they stop, I have 78 now, right now. The number next to your name is the order in which your hand was, was raised. So keep your hand raised. I'm going to application share. Um, let me get my web browser up and application share that. There we go. You've got to you've got to keep keep your hand up because I'm going to put in the number, but I'm only going to put in the number once. So you'll see my web browser here with the randomizer. All right, I see up to 81, so I'm going to use 81. I want a number between 1 and 81. Get the random number. And keep your hands up because if you put your hand down, that your number is going to change. And it's 69, 69. So who is 69? Keep your hands up. 69 is looks like Diane. Is that, that right? Was, uh, I thought. Let's see. Was Diane? Diane Norris, I think I saw. Yes, I think it's Diane Norris. Mm -hmm. So is Diane 69? Okay. And what, what next? She's Diane Norris. Right. Okay. Congratulations, Congratulations Diane. Diane. You can go ahead and put your hands down now. And that lowers your hand if you click on your hand again. So I'll turn the, the webinar back over to you, Laura, and you can you can continue. We already have our first okay. winner. And Diane, okay, Diane um, is going to need to provide her email address. I don't know if she will provide that to you, and then you'll pass it on to me. She may not want to put it here in the chat. I don't know. 
what is your usual procedure for that? You can also click on one of the moderator's names and send it by private chat to a moderator. Okay, she can, and so she should be able to send it to me right. actually by private but, chat. Um, if click and on Diane, if you don't hear from me, um, you can email me at contact at com and just you know let me know I was the winner, whatever, and you know we'll 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 um get that to you. Okay, so um, some of you may have already you see this how to enter the giveaway and you're like woohoo I'm going to go over there right now and enter. Well, um, it's not open yet. <laughs> it's not supposed to open till one. Unless I don't know, like I said, maybe I set it up wrong, but I set it up to open at one after the webinar. So you're gonna go to that link. Um, you can also get to it by going to laurakamler.com and up at the top you click on the file cabinet icon and then drop down to donors choose resources and then go to the webinars page. So let me explain how Francie and I spent a lot of time talking about this. Um, there are five gift cards. We we had originally said you have to be in the live session to get one of them. Then I kind of said, you know, some people, like I had somebody who emailed me, she had to go to a funeral today. And other people have plans, and then some people are going to email me after the session. It happens every time. I tried to get in. I couldn't get in. So we're doing sort of a compromise, and that is we are going to draw three names probably an hour or so from now where it, the recording is not out and you would have had to have been at the live session in order to um, submit, you know, to enter the contest. But then we're going to reserve two more and let the giveaway run through the end of the day Sunday so that once the recording is released, people who couldn't get in can watch and they can also enter. When you go to the raffle copter, um, giveaway thing, it's going to, the first thing it's going to say is that you've got to unlock it and see what your other options are. You've got to put in a secret phrase. So we're using Charles Best, who was the founder of Donors Choose, as your secret phrase. And um, you may only enter once into the contest, and we will notify you by email. I think it might connect with your email account or Facebook page. I can't remember exactly how it works with Rafflecopter, but we will be able to um, pick up that information and um, we'll contact you now. Even though we're going to choose the first three in an hour or so, you actually won't hear from us till later in the day because the way the raffle copter works, I can't really get access to the data right away. But um, you'll hear from us by the end of the day. We will also be announcing this in the Caring Classrooms community. So um, that's how it's going to work. And um, let's see, I don't know if there's any questions over in the chat here before we um, if there's any questions about the giveaway. Um, Jen asked, is there a space between the words? You know, it really doesn't matter because here's what's going to happen. Me and Francie, Francie and I will be able to go behind the scenes and raffle copter. And it's, we're going to look at it. And so, like, it doesn't matter if you capitalize it or not or put a space between. Like, if it says Charles Best, we know that's a secret word. It's not automated. Um, we would also ask you, please don't um, just you know, tell all your friends this is the secret word, go enter. Um, that's going to cut down your <laughs> opportunities to win for one thing, but also we really, especially in the first hour, we really want it to be for the people who took time out of their day to attend, which looks like we have over 100 people in the room. Um, we'd like you to have the best opportunity to win the first three cards. And then after that, you know, when we send the recording link, tell people, hey, watch the recording, and then they can um, get the secret phrase at the end of the recording. Um, so is there a um, way to get the slides for today? Peggy, do you talk about that at the end? I'm going to let you, I think we're done with this. Uh, let me just wrap up and then I'll turn it over to the other moderators who might be able to share information with you. I just want to say thanks for attending and I want to thank the um, 3 a.m. teacher and Creative Clips. These are two uh, clip art clip artists on Teachers Pay Teachers that um, I purchased um, some of the cute clip art that you saw in the presentation and I wanted to give them a shout out. And I also want to give a shout out, a thank you to all of the great photos that you saw throughout the webinar um, about a week ago. I asked people in the Caring Classrooms community if you would be you know, willing to let me use photographs from your Donors Choose account for the presentation, put your link here, and I did not, I cannot possibly give credit by name to all of the teachers, but I hope some of you enjoyed seeing your students pictured in our webinar. And that's it for me. Um, then I'll let uh, one of the other moderators take it over. 
Thank you, Laura. I do have quite a few questions captured, some of which were answered as we went along. I'll go back to the top. Uh, this probably was answered, but it was asked, can homeschoolers submit projects? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Francie, it looks like Francie's on, I'm going to let Francie handle a lot of the technical okay. type things. Uh, so Francie? Okay, can you uh, repeat your question? Can homeschoolers submit a project proposal? No, I don't believe so. I think you have to be a public school teacher. What about uh, Department of Defense military schools? Yes, I, I read a lot of proposals from teachers who work at a military base. And um, be sure to describe that if that's what your situation is, because a lot of people want to help uh, teachers that help the military. So yes, I've seen a lot of proposals from teachers working on a base. Great. Uh, can IT teachers submit proposals? I don't know what that stands for. IT uh, information technology. Well, sure. If you're um, if you teach in a school, you can teach. Uh, we get a lot of teachers that have special day classes, teach autistic children, resource specialists, counselors, nurses. So uh, uh, librarians can submit. So yes, I would think that the IT teacher, if they teach a class, would be able to submit. Okay, I'm just going to pause questions for now because it is a little past the top of the hour and, and I'm going to close the show so we can stop the recording and we'll come back to the questions if that's okay. So our upcoming shows for Classroom 2.0 Live on next Saturday will be Donors Choose Part 2 with Rebecca Burkoff, Jenny Jones, and Paula Noggle with hashtag fourth chat success stories to donors choose and March 22nd Aaron Klein is our featured teacher for March. The Learning Revolution is Steve Hargandon's newest project and he has gathered together all of his uh, professional development teacher resources at one site at Learning Revolution and Peggy has posted the link in the chat. What's nice is that the host your own webinar has come back to the learning revolution in a Blackboard Collaborate room. When you exit the room, you should go to a survey page in your browser. And on that survey, one of the things you can do is nominate a featured teacher. Uh, you can also fill out a form to um, nominate a featured teacher. You can nominate yourself as well at tinyurl.com CR2O live featured teacher nominate without the E at the end. Here's the information about the survey. Again, once you exit the room and you will leave the classroom just like you leave any pr computer program, a window should pop up for the survey or you can take the survey link in the chat box which Peggy has posted. The link is also in the live binder. So there's three different places to get the survey for today's show. When you do complete the survey, one of the things you can do is request a professional development certificate. That information for that request is at the bottom of the survey. Please, though, include a personal email for the survey to be sent to you. School emails tend to block this type of request. So you might not get the certificate copy if you request it go to your school email. The archives are available in both a video collection and an audio collection at CR2O Live iTunes U. So those are other ways to get the, re the, the recordings. Yeah, the certificates for professional development will go out either later tonight or sometime tomorrow. You also can access an RSS feed of the show archives from the Classroom 2.0 live website. The link is right there. So there are many ways to get to other recordings like the first Donors Choose recording. So special thanks again to Laura Candler and Francie Kugelman, to Steve Hargandon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution to Weebly.com for providing our 
website and to everyone who participated in, in today's show. Thank you. The recording will be in the live binder later on, so will the chat log. Again, everyone, thank you for coming today on a Saturday. I will now yeah, stop. The Laura and I can answer some questions. Yep. Well, right. Is there somebody, Peggy, has somebody um, been looking for I questions? I have. I've been capturing or, questions as we've, okay. as we've gone along and, along, and I've already asked okay. a couple of them. Can a staff member okay. who works with rehabilitation behavior for at-risk kids submit, submit a proposal? Well, I so this know doesn't that, sound like a uh, teacher. Yeah, I know a counselor can because mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a lot of those, but I don't know about staff member. Why doesn't the staff member just get a teacher to write the project for them? Mm -hmm. Good, I good idea. Uh, is it okay to submit proposals to benefit students at multiple grade levels, even those even though those students do not sit in your classroom? Uh, what lately they've been changing the rules for us screeners to look at projects. It used to be the project had to only help your classroom. Now it can help a mul uh, multiple classrooms. But when you write it, focus more on your classroom, and um, that's just the kind of proposals we let go. But you know, it, I saw uh, there was a sign someone wanted, and it would help the whole school. So that got approved. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do that, but really focus on how your kids will benefit from the resource. Thank you. Do the items become the property of the teacher or the school district in which he or she teaches? And I, I, I answer that in the chat box, but I'll repeat it. Okay. When you transfer to another school, or if you transfer, if it's a public school, you can take your resources with you. However, if you retire, you don't own those resources. They are the property of the school. You probably could choose who gets them, but they, you don't really own them. Mm -hmm. Francie, could I ask you something? Because I think I put misinformation in the chat, uh -huh. so I just want to clarify. It used to be that you didn't own them. You had to ask permission. But you're saying now they've changed it to where yeah. the teacher does own it? Yeah. The, where the, I mean, like they can take it to another school within the same system, yeah, you're saying? There's a, there's, there's a, the there's a page on Donors Choose where they have clarified ownership because so many okay. people asked it. And now they said, you may okay. take your resources with you to the next school. So that's nice. But okay. I, that's wonderful because yeah. people work so hard to get their projects funded and then to have to leave it all behind and it might end up in a closet where somebody else is not going to use it. That always upset me. Oh, sure. <laughs> because right. Someone was asking why use AKJ over Amazon for books. They, you know, they're a vendor. They paid money to be a vendor for Donors Choose and it's nice to support them. You can support Amazon for everything else. I mean, it's just amazing what Amazon offers. But you, um, it's nice to help out AKJ and they do a really good job. So that's where you, uh, we recommend you go for books. Well, if I could interject too, I heard with Amazon, I don't know if this is true now, but I've had some teachers posting things about how, in fact, one person on our Caring Classrooms page got a project funded for some um, base 10 manipulatives, but then Amazon was out of them. And then she never got them. Like, she got everything else, but she didn't get half of her project, and she had to go write another proposal for those items. And uh, several people had said that with Amazon, that seemed to be more of an issue where things weren't available that they'd ordered. I, is, do you know if that's still true? Well, usually you'll get a notice in your email box from um, donors choose saying, this is not available. Please select a replacement item. And they give you the same amount of money okay. if that that resource costs to fund. Okay. You might not be able to find it for that amount, so you have to find something similar. But you don't lose your, your resources. But yeah, you might have to go, you know, school specialty, Kaplan Learning, Lakeshore, those might be better to get the teaching resources you want. All right. That's, I'm looking at the chat, and it seems like a couple of people have put some things. Someone, Dawn, said only select Prime products, Amazon oh, Prime. Right. That kind of makes sense because that's more 
Um, they're more reliable, that, that I would say. That is a new rule. I remember. So they don't really want you going to those vendors that really aren't part of the Amazon circle. So when I helped our school get the gardening projects we need, by the way, that was through Disney. Disney funds 50%. You have to be a, a look at the, uh, the requirements, but they just funded it recently, and that's been going on for like six months. You have to mention Disney in your proposal, and you have to get uh, hands-on resources for something to do with the environment. But anyway, um, I just made sure we asked for all sorts of obscure com composting items, and I just made sure the vent the when I was at Amazon to pick vendors that had the word prime when you first uh, did the search. And I got we got all our resources, no problem. I did want to remind everybody too when um, I don't know what the time limit is on you know the question session, but if if you have questions that are in the chat that are not that we don't get to, maybe we overlook or we run out of time. If you would um, go to Caring Classrooms, join our Facebook page, and you can post it on the wall. And Francie and I read those um, questions and answer them there. If you would please um, don't email us privately with a message feature. These are questions other people would like to see their responses to, and it's very difficult for us to try to answer these one-on-one. -on -one. If it's a one-on-one -on -one question about your specific resource, you probably just need to contact Donors Choose about it directly. So I just kind of want to clarify, because there's a lot of questions going in there, and I don't want people to feel frustrated that when we end the session, you know, they didn't get their question answered. Yeah, I'd like so to, we're, we're here for a to give a for plug you. for a new campaign that Donors Choose is starting next week. It's called the Friends and Family Campaign. And what they're going to do is they're going to reward you if you have three unique donors who donate $20 to your projects, and they'll keep track of it. I believe you, they'll give you a $35 gift card when the campaign ends. And I think if you get up to five to nine projects with $20 donations from unique donors, you'll get an even larger gift card. So uh, we'll provide the link for more information. So if that inspires you to write a proposal now, then you can participate in the Friends and Family campaign, plus your donors can type in Inspire, so their $20 donation will really be worth 40 So this is a really unique moment. And us screeners, we're, we're hundreds and hundreds the proposals are being written right now, and we're we're going to screen them all so they get posted for next week. And I wanted to sort of jump on the end of that too. And um, for caring classrooms in our community, tomorrow is Sunday Sunday, so we will um, put out our call for projects, and people have all day to submit their projects. But because um, this twenty dollar um, special um, event is starting on Monday. Uh, we're not going to pick projects until Monday, and normally when uh, we choose projects for the page, I make a $10 donation to those projects myself just to kind of help out. That for the ones we pick for tomorrow, which will be chosen on Monday, I'm going to make a $20 donation to those projects just because I want them to be able to get that uh, one $20 offering towards their you know, towards our total. So um, it's an extra special time to submit your projects on Sunday, Sunday tomorrow. Um, just remember that I'm not going to actually pick the projects till Monday because I want those, um, you know, the twenty dollars to count towards this contest. So okay. that's wonderful. Uh, Paula, you wanted to take the mic. Go ahead. I just wanted to thank personally Laura and Francie for coming on to this webinar. I reached out to them after I had gone on Laura's page and um, viewed the webinar from previously that she and Francie did about Donors Choose and have been very successful and I thought this is such great information that it needed to be shared again with um, another audience so that of course the circle keeps expanding. And I invite all of you to join us next week as we talk about our success stories and how we went about being a little nervous after, um, you know, learning how to do it and then thinking, okay, is this really going to work? And a group of us got together and we had a wonderful time in a Google Hangout learning from each other and getting it together and have been very successful. So, of course, we want to help 
spread the information and share the love with lots of other people also. So get ready for next week. And Laura and Francie, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome webinar. Sure. Glad to That's be great, here. Paula. It's so nice to know that you watched the webinar and that it helped you. That's wonderful. Peggy, were we going to take a few more questions I saw in the chat? Yeah, I had some other questions that I've yeah. captured. Sure. Sure. Oh, uh, uh, I have something I can say. So Julie just posted about the creditreport.com almost home match. Uh, I believe what you want to ask for is resources that will help with financial literacy. So uh, I've done that match before and I've asked for calculators. I've, and you can go to Donors Choose and look at other people who do have the credit report almost home match. I, I think it's a lot of money they're offering, so you might be able to ask for iPads. But um, these almost home matches disappear. But if you just need resources like calculators and um, maybe manipulatives from Lakeshore, and you mention how it will help your kids understand money and finance, then hopefully Credit Report will uh, pick your project and give it the almost home match. And remember, the first week, if, if you get $50 in donations and double it with the Inspire, your match is funded. So I really recommend if you get an almost home match, you might even want to fund your own project because it's so wonderful to get that match before the money is spent. And then your project goes back to its original price. I've seen this question a few times. How do you find out about Almost Home Grants? Caring classrooms. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, like we, as soon as Francis knows things, she just jumps on our Facebook page and she shares it. Mm -hmm. So there, are, there was a blog from Donors Choose, and I saw some people saying, you know, follow the Donors Choose blog. Mm -hmm. But our um, group and other communities, this is how um, a lot of people are successful because they're a part of these giving communities. And they find and so out there. They get the first information. Right. right. They find out before other people, and sure. also having a project ready to go, so you can quickly post it when something comes up is also good. Great. Or submit it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend having multiple pr proposals at once, or do you focus on one at a time? Uh, I have multiple proposals at once. After you're an established Donors Choose teacher, you can have eight in the process. So I have some that I have to submit some photos on, and some I'm waiting for the resources to come. So you can have eight. And then once you complete the package, you can keep the ball rolling. So um, I always pick for the longest amount of time to write my thank you letters because you lose points if you're late on returning all the thank you uh, mm -hmm. items you need to do. But I try to get them wrapped up as soon as possible so I can keep uh, the projects moving. And with bus trips, it takes forever to get a final invoice. So right. you just write donors choose, and they just sort of take that off of, the, of the, the maximum count you can have. They just put it sort of in a holding pattern. But if you write them, they'll do that for you. If you want funding for several subscription sites, like Powtoon, uh, Brain Pop, Storybird, do you write one proposal or three proposals? Just wondering how to break things down. Well, it's more about the cost. I think Brain Pop's about $150, mm -hmm. and maybe Scholastic News for a classroom subscription is a certain amount. So you just watch your own cost. But there would be nothing wrong with mixing them two to get together. Mm -hmm. but, you know, To me, I like small proposals because, as I said, once your proposal is down to about $70, you'll get it funded. There are so many people who see a, a project with just a little bit left on it, and they get excited, and they want to help you get funded. Sure. Sure. Well, thank you both so very much, and also to, to Paula for um, arranging this so that we can have the show today. We're now going to officially close the show, and again, Everybody, thank you so much for attending. And remember to make sure you log out of the classroom so the recording can be processed. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we enjoyed it very much. Thank you.